Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this serves a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. And finding our inner Brock and Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Or in this episode, we're going to go with Mari Brock Akil and Salim Akil. Y'all should be proud of me. It took a while to make sure I got these names spelled, said right. Well, y'all already know who Mari and Salim are, right? They have these great shows um, that they've done, Being Mary Jane. They met on the set of Moesha. But most importantly, they got that new show out on OWN, Love Is. And me and Niran watched it, and we're going to talk about it. I love they love, though. I love they love, too. Yeah, they're like predecessors to Tommy and Cody, right? Yeah. It reminds like, is that how it is in Hollywood? Y'all could meet each other, fall in love. I don't know if I could do the same work you did. How do you think we'll be in the tag team in that? Well, we do the podcast, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's different, though. Like, this is fun. But eventually, it's going to be work. Oh, is it? I don't know. I hope it's always going to stay fun. Well, but, like, formal training, right? This is not our formal training. This is just us talking. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. this is their formal training. This is their bed and butter. I think in one of the scenes of the episode, they were like, you my competition. Like, I think even if we do this podcast and take it to the next step, we're not each other's competition. Well, we already know you to Beyonce of the group. Listen here. Niram, please. Who is you? I'm Niram. I'm sorry. And I'm Niambi. <laughs> and this is episode 153. Yes, yes. Be sure to leave a one, two, three, four, five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher. And follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters. That's black with no K. You got to check in. Yes, I do got to check. Actually, not much. My parents made it home safely. Thank y'all for all the support and the love that y'all gave. I know y'all always love to see them come in town. The so. Eagles have flown the coop. They gone. I repeat, the Eagles have flown the coop. They gone, y'all. So, you know, it was four people living in a one-bedroom house for about four or five days. So you already know how that go. But it, it was good. It was good to see them. Um, I think it's always hard when they leave because we've been apart for so long, right? So, you know, I'm, I was even telling Niram, how do we best navigate that? Right. You know, I even think about like black culture mm-hmm. and how sometimes you're not trained or groomed to leave home. No. So when you leave home, it seemed is not that my parents say this. They never say this. They always encourage me to leave and go where I need to be. But I think in black communities, sometimes it's like, oh, well, your kids ain't home. Something not right. right. Or it's a sad occasion. But it's not a sad occasion. Though. I know. But compared to white culture, they be like, yeah. I don't. Some of the folks I work with, and they got make decent money. They be like, "Well, I haven't seen my parents in about two years." I'm like, "Damn, where they live in New Zealand? Like, what?" It's just a totally different like mind frame. Uh-huh. So you know, just navigating with Especially that. Especially when you talk to your parents every day. I talk to my parents every at least one of them every day. Majority, both of them every day. Struggles of being the only child, right? So I'll mm-hmm. talk to my dad in the morning, and my mom in the evening. Like so, every single day. I don't understand how they can mess with you. They talk, y'all talk every day, and at least Facetime at least twice a week. What do you mean you don't understand how they can miss me? Right, I don't. Y'all Facetime and talk so damn much, it's like y'all never go. <laughs> so much that you be in on the conversations, Nero. Right. <laughs> so just processing through that, and you know, work work is finally balancing out. Um, meaning that I'm not, I'm no longer the newest person at my work anymore. And I'm getting new people that's reporting to me. And there's, like, another person that's coming in my type of position. So, you know, I feel like I need to step up and be kind of that peer mentor thing. And it feels a little weird because I feel like I'm still new there. Y'all only been there for a few months, right? And they already like, child, you ain't new no more. And now I'm learning everyone. Don't get me wrong. I love my job. My job is not hard. It's amazing. But I'm learning everyone little courts, right? I have some folks who report to me. They be like, oh, I'm good. I'm golden. And other ones be like, I'm drowning. I'm overwhelmed. So I'm learning. Um, also, what we did, we went to go see Ocean's Eight. Mm-hmm. Where me and Aaron, we're just trying to go to the movies. The movies really bring us joy, yep. and it's really a time for us to talk together. Like me and Aaron, really good with movies because we'll go see movies like the other person doesn't want to see. Like it, we really don't discriminate on movies. Nope. I can't think of maybe one movie. Like I would go see a foreign film with subtitles. Like it doesn't matter, right? If we got a good plot line, I'm there for it. Mm. So me and Aaron, we're getting back into the screen thing where we go to the movies at least once or twice a week. Like that's how committed we were right and we went to see ocean eight and it was cute it was a good movie you think it was a cute one yeah well you never seen any of the ocean i've movies, never seen so. any just like i did rockies and i can't do it y'all like y'all got on me when i never seen none of the rockies and i had to take a whole weekend to binge watch it yeah i gotta binge watch oceans is it worth it is it in that category i think it, it it'll be enlightening so you can see some of the callbacks because they did a lot of, a lot of callbacks to the previous movies that you just didn't get. How how early I got to go back? Do I got to go back to the Oceans and the what? Is that 2000s with George Clooney or the Oceans with Frank Sinatra? 
Uh, well, they all are remakes. So oh, they the same plot line. Uh, no, they are not the same plot line. Oh, but they they under the same premise. So, um, the original Ocean's Eleven with Frank Sinatra in a Rat Pack. You know, that's the original. And then you got George Clooney, which is like a remake of that. Of the Ocean's Eleven. How yeah. many are they? Then it's Ocean's like 10 and a half. What is it? Yeah. Why are they called Oceans? Because their last name is Ocean. Oh. And depending on the number of people, that's how many people. Like, that's the name of the movie. So Ocean Eleven was about. 11 people. 11 driving people. somebody. Yeah. And then what were the other prequels or sequels to it? Um, Ocean's 10? Sequels. Yeah, like, but what are Oceans? What so are Oceans? Oceans 12 and Oceans 13, I believe. Oh, they just went in that order? Yeah, I think so. Oh, well, now we got to come and do at least Oceans 9. Oh, so that leaves Sandra room for Oceans 9 and 10 and 11. Yeah. I mean, 9 and 10. Mm-hmm. I kind of like that. I thought the women did it. Like, they did it well. Like, I, I haven't seen other Oceans, so maybe I'm assuming that they rounded up at the end a little quick. Mm-hmm. Like, at the end, it just kind of got a little too quick for me. But I was like, wait, 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 wait. But it was good. Like, it was good girl power. Um, first of all, can we talk about how Sandra Bullock is gorgeous? Is it because she got that black son? I don't know. Sandra Bullock is gorgeous. I didn't realize how gorgeous she was. Mm-hmm. Jesus. She was on the scene. I was like, damn, that's a pretty bitch. <laughs> and she got some years on her, right? <laughs> but she's gorgeous, right? Mm-hmm. All the women in there were something. Mindy Callen, her skin was popping. That's the first time I heard M- Millie Ka- M- Mindy Callen talking her native language. You know, I be forgetting she Indian, honey. Rihanna did her thing. She's standing up for smart brown girls in the stems. Um, It was just interesting to watch. So I'm here for it. So if you're looking for something to kiki with, um, yeah, I would say Ocean's 8 is worth it. Yeah, it is. What do you think, Nero? Yes, because, you know, you got Rihanna Fenty in there, as Mm -hmm. usual. Mindy Khaled. Mindy Khaled. Um, Sarah Paulson. No, I'm sorry. Sarah Paulson. Sarah Paulson. Uh, Paulson, who was a bad bitch contest, Mm -hmm. who playing all those good ass um, FX movies and shows. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, somebody else, Kate Blanchett, like it's some OGs in there, right? Yeah. And Hathaway. And like, you know, she ain't my favorite, but you know, you gotta put respect on her name, right? Mm-hmm. So I thought it was good. It was all female cast, up to that little Asian man at the end. Mm-hmm. I don't know who that Asian man was. He's a callback from the original Ocean Eleven. Oh, okay. With uh, George Clooney. Okay. So it's only three movies. We can do that in the weekend. You think we should? I think it'd be worth it. In addition it. to this one, or three? So it's 11, 12, and 13? 13, yeah. Okay. I haven't seen like that. Right? Are there the any black people right? in that one? Yeah. Besides, I'm not talking about Sammy Davis Jr. I'm talking about the other one. Yeah, Don Cheadle was in it. Oh, he the black, he the Sammy Davis. Yeah, he the Sammy Davis. Wasn't Bernie Mac in some of them? Yeah, he's in one of them too. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, just been listening to the um the Carter's tape. Yeah. I can't get be, be past ape shit though. Mm-hmm. So y'all give me a little bit longer. Give me the next week so I can listen to it. For some reason, I just can't listen past like ape shit. It's a hot song. I don't know why. And I know they telling truths and shaming the devils all on it. Mm-hmm. Give me more time. And I, we all know it's a it's a Migos uh, reference track, but the Migos is the Migos, okay? It's still a hot song. Yeah. I'm not gonna hate Beyonce made it. Niggas is hating on it. Yes. Why? Yeah. You should read the article on Blavity. Well, you know Blavity, honey. I'm talking about how uh, they heard the, uh, the reference track and how people are, like, hating on it. Well, not hating, but saying, like, they, they like the Migos version. Oh, it. shut up. But the thing is, you can't out Migos to Migos. Like, yeah, that's they do it best. They created their own genre. <laughs> you can't out Migos to Migos. Yeah, bye. But shit, Beyonce did put some swag on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and bye. sometimes it's, it's actually it's a little refreshing yeah. to have it, to hear Beyonce with the Migos flow. I agree. Bye, Neil. I don't got much pass. Uh, I don't got anything. Did I you been, go running? What's going on with your I running? Been, your workout? I've your been life? running, been working out, feeling good, feeling great, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with, as far as this nutrition thing with Nyambi. Yeah, we gotta do something because y'all, we broke down, got some Taco Bell, and it was so good. <laughs> and the Taco Bell is the devil, <laughs> but not that I gotta. My whole meal for Taco Bell costs three dollars, and I'm full. Now y'all didn't get off the damn dollar menu, on Taco Bell. I got a beef and cheese burrito, um, in a, a quesadilla, and I'm full as hell. Blessings, three dollars. That's how I know we got to get back focus. Yeah, but you know my running's going good. I got a couple opportunities that I'm working on, um, especially like some of the listeners have reached out to me 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, now I'm working on, uh, well, potentially working on a project. So that's looking, that's looking pretty cool. I know you're still on a job. Huh? So anybody, any recruiters in Silicon Valley, please let us know. Right. You know, yeah. Facebook, YouTube. Anybody Google, work for any of those would love to give Adobe, a reference. Let us know. Uh, what else? Credit test me. I don't give a fuck who. Oh Somebody, a tech company in Silicon Valley. Yes, we're looking Get for your Who's willing to give a referral? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I need an on-site interview. Oh my goodness, that's all you need. Oh, and um, I know we said it on Monday's episode, but we're recording this, and this is June team. So, niggas, you are free. We are free. My job is doing something for Juneteenth, and I'm nervous. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's it's gonna happen the day the pod. It's happening Wednesday the day the podcast comes out. So Friday, I'll let y'all know how it go. I seen the email and I almost closed down my laptop. Oh. <laughs> What they gonna do for Juneteenth? They gonna have a they gonna have a speaker. I think this is the first time I've ever worked at any employer, and they even knew they mentioned Juneteenth before I did. That's interesting, right? Yeah, it's scary because if it's trash, I have to tell them. I can't. I can't hold my peace on Juneteenth. Every other holiday, I can, but not Juneteenth. They cannot take that away. Mm-hmm. That is the day. That's Emancipation Day. They cannot take that away. I get it. But at least so, your at least your job trying. That's what I'm going. I'm gonna go to it. And the way I sent it was like, oh, this is wonderful. I will be attending. If anybody would like to join, please let me know. And then, of course, everybody, Nayams. I would love to go with you, Nayams. Mm-hmm. Keep me prayed up. It's, a, it's supposed to be a black woman as a speaker, so I hope she don't come in there and cut the fuck up. Ooh, I hope she do. I hope not. I hope she cut I mean, cut the fuck up in, like, a bl- bad way, like, white guilt way. I hope she cut up and called them all, all them crafties. Oh, I you hope, think she could cut up and call them colonizers? I hope they start crying. If Nia's realize, listening, if that yo, happens, Nia, I'm gonna do a ding dong. <laughs> Cause I'm not about to do all this. I have to work. <laughs> I got I got emails to answer. Okay, <laughs> I got emails to answer, and I'm trying to be stress free. Mm. All right. Yeah. So you want to go into some pillow talk? Oh no, actually, it's, we got a black. Don't we got a black love story? We actually got a black love story. Well, let's do My it. Yeah. So this black love story. Um, this week is from Mark and Denise Joseph, okay. who has been together for 20, 20. Don't say it like that. Why are you saying it in surround sound? 20 years okay. on July 27th. Mm-hmm. Because I want to put emphasis and emphasis at it. 20 years ain't 20. no joke. That's dedication. That's love. Mm-hmm. That's real love, honey. So how did they first meet? They met at an HBCU Ooh, in, the, in caf. the cafeteria. Was y'all niggas playing spades? How were they was eating? I, Nah, yeah, I didn't go to HBCU. Y'all niggas don't eat in the cafeteria. What do y'all do in the cafeteria? Niggas play spades in the calf. They just let y'all sit up in the calf all day and play. Yes. Oh well, at least at mine. I don't we know play, if the PWIs they allow that. We played spades all day. Spades and dominoes. The P- oh my god. So you brought the cars into the calf, or they were already there? I don't know who brought them there. I just know whenever I got there, it was always spades and bones being played. Did you say bones? Yes. So they met at a F, uh, at a HBCU cafeteria. Who was at African American school? Denise thought he was cute and asked for his name. Oh, look at that! Was this back twenty years ago? So was this back in the day where like everybody didn't get cell phones; they just had cell phones? Yeah. Oh, so you really had to have interaction. Mm-hmm. Did you ever try to push up on folks in the calf? Absolutely. Oh, how did I it go? Shoot my shot. How? How? Oh, near, I'm always shooting a shot. How did it go? I said, "Hey, girl." No, yeah, I'm, I'm serious. No, I shoot did, my shot. Did that ever work? Or? No. Oh. <laughs> but I shot my shot. Like, you know, I, I, I'm the type of dude that stop somebody and say, hey, you know, uh, I'm near. <laughs> no, I'm not Ambi. No, <laughs> I'm near. <laughs> yeah. You don't know me. I don't know you, but I'm digging your style. Oh, my God. And I would love to go to lunch with you one day. Oh, play shit. That's how you know your parents are a little older. <laughs> oh, play shit. Yeah. Mm-mm. And, and so it's right. like, look, you might have, look, you might have got a boyfriend. Look, I'm just trying to be your friend. I run that. I'm trying to be that friend. Mm-hmm. You know, that that worked a few times. I want to say it worked eight times out of 10. It, the 80% it worked? Yeah, 80% of the time it you worked. You 80% lie. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm for real. Oh, okay. That worked. What was Especially the- down south. They ain't hear that shit. You know, I'm coming from some Detroit player shit. Mm-hmm. Girl, I don't care. You got a man. I'm just trying to be your friend. What was, do you, and I think, now that I think about it, could you even go back to like that cafeteria style living? Like when everyone in one room and you going out down to dinner, like, do you remember that? How did you and your crew do that? Or did you eat by yourself? 
No, I was with the football team. Okay. So, Even at the PWI, or how did it work at both? Well, at uh, Black College, I was with, with the football team. So we we was all we all ate together. Mm-hmm. And just had like a sectional spot. Oh, so because y'all had to eat at the same time and stuff every day, different yeah. practices and stuff. Yeah. Did y'all have a special diet? No, they just told us to eat everything. Oh. Eat everything that's not boarded down or glued down to the floor. Oh my god. Well, how, when you got to the PWI, how was it? Um, PWI was different. Um, I still had a crew. My first, you know, my first year there, I had a crew because I had some friends from high school that went there, so you know, I kicked it, kicked it with them. Until I, you know, until I had to lay the land and, and fig- figure out who was going to be my crew. Mm-hmm. And then uh, when I moved off campus, I used to go with you and get oh. those meal passes. Jesus. All right. It ain't nothing. Oh, it ain't nothing like having a meal pass. When did each of you know your partner was? No, no, no. What about you, baby? Um, well, you know, I already had, always had roommates. So I was like an RA. So I used to, I think my first couple of years, all the roommates used to go together. But then lastly... It was just me and this other person who we were really close roommates, and like we were roommates all the way basically to the end, and we would just we would it would just be us two, and we would became isolated, and we would just get two tops. Yeah, she had those mail passes too for me. Oh, shout out, <laughs> shout out, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so how did it, um, how did each of you know that your partner was the one? It says because both of us were young and silly. It took six years. <laughs> Preach. Yeah, you know, a lot of times folks try to have these elaborate stories and moments, but sometimes you just don't fucking know. No, you don't. Sometimes you slip and fall into it. But like, oh wait, I think the Lord is telling me you're the one. Yeah, I think so. I even think about us. Like we were just friends. Yeah, and I thought she was gonna be just my role doll. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Movie buddies. Yeah, we did watch movies. Like I really did. Like if we didn't work out, like I just thought you would be like a cool somebody I could call. You know, I feel like every woman and every man needs like someone of the opposite sex mm-hmm. um, to just be like, you know, am I off with this? Yeah. Or why do the folks of your gender do this? Can you give me a little insight? I thought that's kind of what you were gonna be to me. Did you? How did you feel about me or no? Um, truthfully, I didn't even have no notion. Oh, it was the same thing. I was just seeing what how the chips was gonna fly. Mm-hmm. I didn't be like, oh, she gonna be the one. It wasn't like love is. There was I didn't change your life. You changed my life, but it wasn't no from the beginning. Oh, well, like what? I didn't see you and be like, oh, this is gonna be the woman that's gonna change my life forever. When did you know I was the woman to change your life? Shit, we moved out to New England. Oh. <laughs> Shut up! Why you say that? Because <laughs> I got the jokes, baby. I know you do. The next one is. Um, what's the key to success of your relationship? Is this continue to take, continue to have dates and just, and, and just us trips. Oh, and just us trips. Mm-hmm. Naomi, you want to preach on that? Absolutely. You know, you always got to date each other, especially, you know, when you've been there for a long time. Cause, uh, you know, start, shit start fizzling out. Ooh. Y'all just be getting all mad at each other for no apparent reason. Just for them breathing. Right. Mm-hmm. And you be like, damn. There go, did they go living again? It right. must have living. Right, and sometimes you be like, you know what? I got something for your ass. We going out to dinner, nigga. Oh. And then be like, what? And be like, put on your prettiest outfit you got. And then she be like, ooh, my prettiest outfit? Your With prettiest. that red lip, baby. Oh, put on that red lip. Oh, I love a Fenty. Ooh, or she put on that Ruby. Fenty? Or Ruby Woo. Look, we can just go to Burger King in the movies. She be happy. Oh, my God. No, don't do that <laughs> shit. But y'all know what I mean. Uh, maybe not Burger King, but you know. Don't do that. Friday's chilies. Yeah, chilies that's a nice little mix, right? You know something. Next question, Nero. Um, what advice? Uh, what advice would you give a young married couples? Make sure you make time to play with each other yeah. every week. Ooh. Plus, always talk. My husband tells people uh, I wake them up <laughs> in the night and talk all types of philosophical things. Now, that's true. Niram has to get a little better at that. Sometimes I get my best thoughts at night or late at night, and I want to talk. I don't care if I got to go work in the morning. And Niram's eyes be so heavy, he can't take it. Why you never want to talk at 5 a.m.? Because I'm asleep. But I'm woke. I, 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 the, the notions haven't struck me yet. I don't know what's going on. Well, all my notions struck me, and I'll be wanting to talk. Yo ass don't want to talk. But I, what, what I will say, let's bring this back, is for the partner who at least try to stay up, right? Mm-hmm. 
I so, try my best. That's you do. Like Neil never wanna be like, I'm sleep by bitch. Like he'll try to stay up and he just be you know how your head be bobbing hard. Ooh, that head be bobbing hard. But he try to hang in there with me. I go up and I just be trying and then sometimes I don't even know what the hell you talking about. I just like, uh huh. And then bye. What Good night. Go to sleep now. Can we talk about this? That, that y'all trying to do on PG thirteen talk. Make sure y'all make time to play with each other every week. <laughs> Yeah, you want to unpack, unpack that uh, yes. old black talk. I will do that once you uh, give me your cell phone and stop looking at dogs. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Nayabi has been telling me all damn day how much she's been missing Desi, so much so <laughs> that she's looking at dogs right now. It's this podcast. other girl at my job. She also looking for, she's looking to adopt, and she asked for my help on picking out dogs. So what she do, she send me a list of dogs almost daily to look and approve. But she don't know nothing about dogs. Well, she don't know that. <laughs> it's the blind leading the fucking blind. And so she be like, "When we get our dog, you gonna be his god mama." And at first, I be like, "I ain't for that shit." Now I'm like, "I'm very, I'm honored." Oh <laughs> so when she go out of town, so that means when she go out of town, I babysit her puppy. Our I'm puppy honored. Can't have dogs. I'm honored. I'm sneaking them in. Go ahead, Darren. What's the next one? Um, anything else you want to tell us about your love story? It took time. Um, what? It took time for them to find their place. It's a never-ending story at this point. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess that that's a word to say. For mm-hmm. them to be together for almost two, 20 years and for them to say, like, you know, it's, oh, I love that picture of them. It it took them a, a time and patience to get to this point, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's a word to the other folks out there to say is love is ever-evolving. Love is it ain't home. easy. Mm-hmm. It's moments where I'm sure where she wanted to cuss him out. And I'm sure it's when he wanted to cuss her out. And I'm sure it was times they couldn't keep their hands off each other. But know that it's eaves and flows. And it takes time to time, time, space, and consistency to get to that point. That's how I interpret it. Yeah. Y'all let us know if y'all I'm wrong. Yeah. All right. So shout out to Mark and Denise. Yes, thank y'all so much for seeing your love story. I love y'all. Y'all be seeing the cute little pictures. Near map, maybe one day I'll put them up. I'm on it. Thank you. Because every picture we've gotten for everyone has been so cute. Yeah, beautiful couple. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just real. Like, you know, you be looking at it. You be like, yeah, they in love. Mm-hmm. It ain't that Instagram love where you be like, Jesus, this is posed. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is posed and airbrushed to the gods, right? But it's that love. You look at them like, it looks like they really like each other. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. They in like, they in love, and they in life. That's my new thing. The three L's. Yeah. Like, love, and life. Should we get that trademark? Oh, you know, Naomi just be talking. Well, Naomi, you can be just talking. I'm about to hustle. <laughs> oh, but you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you want to speak life into You know how folks, I get that from, like, you know how people say you want to speak life into you? Like, sometimes you just want to be in life with each other. Mm-hmm. Like, you just want to speak that energy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's equivalent to, like, I love you. I life you, right? I, I want to just speak whatever hopes and dreams you have, right? Mm-hmm. I just want to speak life into that. Like, that's what I think is a, a good partner and friendship and relationship is just speaking life into people so i like you i love you and i life you mm. all the above right all right oh, too much New i didn't even go to church this week maybe that's what's off with me <laughs> You because my to father was in, we had to get reservations so i missed the you know i got an early church and so i i missed my word this week so maybe yeah. that's what's throwing me off in a little bit yeah because you know your church never mind Oh, well, you know my church don't play. My church is a clean hour and a half. Ain't no early, ain't no late service. You either come at ten or you don't come. But you know they got a um. You know what I'm saying? They got a. That's what we should have watched it on t- online. They have a broadcast. Oh, my church is pretty interactive. Well, y'all should have did that while I was running. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Next time we'll do that. All right, Nira. What's our pillow talk? Um, don't you want to talk about love is? Yes. So did y'all watch it on own? It came out out yesterday. Love is. Um, you want to give a little summary or no? Uh, what you doing? So it's about. <laughs> Did he just ask me to do it? Yes. It's about um, a young couple, uh, Nuri and Yajir. Yashir. Why my mom talking about? I think they done took y'all names. <laughs> I was like, who? <laughs> y'all know y'all be talking about. This is my mama. Y'all know y'all be talking about Oprah and stuff. Maybe they done knew they was talking about. They done took your names. And I said, what? I said, say near my name. I'm, right. I'm silly checking it. Because if that's sitting near Manayambi, I'm going to need the, our little um, community to start doing something. Because wait a damn minute, uh, Queen Oprah. Wait a damn minute. But I was like, they just more Afrocentric names. Or it's not even Afrocentric, ethnic. 
Right. So the uh, TV show centers around Nuri and Yazir, and pretty much uh, it goes back and forth. I like love how that, they though. meet and like the old them. And I guess what what's really going on is that like story. a documentary of a love story. Maybe it's like Black Love Doc. It's like Black Love Doc. Like a live action black love doc. What I've been asking for. So maybe they did take my idea. So it's an old black couple that is just old telling a black, black love, love story, and then they flash back. It's near a Nyambi love story. You remember when you were telling me about how you cut me off and when I let you know? Yeah, that would have. I did it again. You just did that. Sorry. Um. I lost my train of thought. You how they flash back and forth, Neil. So they flash back and forth. So yeah, it's like a, a old black, a regular old black ass couple oh my God. telling a black ass love story, and then they flash back and they do a live action of it. Yeah, yeah. What's it called when you tell the story and then it like fade to the flashback? Flashback. I oh. don't know. I thought that's a certain type, but I, I think it's interesting because at first I, I I thought it was just going to be us walking through their love story, mm-hmm. like in real time. Mm-hmm. And I really wasn't there for it. Like, I didn't want to be in the air. Is they going to be together? Is they going to break up? Like, it's something relieving to know that they made it. Yeah. And they made it and they're happy. So it makes the ups and downs be a little bit more bearable. And I can really dig in. Because sometimes I really can't. Like, being Mary Jane and stuff or girlfriends, although they're amazing shows. But when they be going that up and down shit, like, sometimes you don't you just want bitches to be happy. Yeah. Like, sometimes I just wanted them black women to have a air quote, happy ending, right? Yeah. And knowing there's no such thing as happy ending, but at the end, have it worked out, right? To be loved. Right. To be loved and for them to love themselves. And as we fast forward to, in this, you already know that happens. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I had to go do a little research while you was talking. Yeah, so huh. they're recounting their 30 years together yeah. for an anniversary video. Yes. So, older Neri says that... And, which is the woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Says that Yazir... Yes. Uh described him as a meteor that hit her life Ooh, pow. that made her take off her mask mm. that she's been wearing so you can see her in the real light see the real light in her i agree like i remember when she said that and that statement really stuck to me because i think Niram is one of the few people in, in my life who's able to i don't know if it's a mask but be able to pull back the layers of nyambi I think I have a lot of layers, and I think I'm transparent with those, but I think it's a lot of work to get to those layers, and everyone's not willing to put in the work. And I think Niram has put in the most work to see all facets of me, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So when she talked about that mask, I can completely understand, because it's easy to put on masks for people, right? It's easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You want to get like the whole breakdown, or you just want to do like No, you maybe say what he said. And then he he said that she changed. Yeah, his was at the end, y'all, because I know some people might not have watched it yet, and y'all should. What hit my throat was when he said what? She changed his life. Forever. Forever. Mm-hmm. And then he started the old man black cry. You know when the tears <laughs> look like it hurt? Because <laughs> they ain't crying in so long. You know what I'm talking about? You never seen people, black people crying like yes. it hurt? <laughs> yes. You're like, is that hurting you? It, it reminds me of <laughs> Von Zant when that black daddy was crying. It like, you know. And he's like. Like, like it hurts, right? It's not like a because a lot of times when you cry, it's supposed to be like a a relief, right? You know, a lot mm-hmm. of times when people cry, it's a release mm-hmm. of some sort. But you know, when some folks cry, it look like it hurts, like it's almost painful to watch. That's what I would say. He was on the borderline. And he also said, "Neri saved my life." Saved. That's was it. He she saved his damn life. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it was nice to see the throwback to what would you say the late nineties? Yeah, maybe 96, early two thousand. Ninety six. Okay, yes, yeah, I was right. So mid to late. So they're a little, th- yeah, yeah. So I would say they're starting their lo- love story a little older than what we are. Yeah, they're starting there in 30? 33. Like, yeah, he was 33. Was she 33? I think she's a little younger. Uh, Maybe mid-20s. And he's older. Mm-hmm. But they're they starting their love story a little older than we did. Right. They're trying to get into careers. Yeah. You know, chasing but we can definitely can relate in Hollywood. And, like, I'm shout out to the fashions. Yeah. Um, Your dad had on the same Tommy Hilfiger uh, hook up that Neri had on. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, y'all, came here in the Tommy Hilfiger's, um, what's it called? No, this nigga came in in a lime green. But the kids green, wear it now. That's what I said. It didn't went so long. It came back in style. The kids a wear lime it. green Tommy Hilfiger tracksuit. Yeah, like what the kids are wearing. I promise you, Jay Versace probably got it on. In one of his Instagram videos. And your dad said, I've been waiting five years to just come back out around. But I would say 10. 
<laughs> and he did because the kids when you literally can go on instagram <laughs> and type in tommy hilfiger jogging suit and i promise you will come out the only difference is only 18 and 19 year olds are wearing it i started to put it on our page <laughs> we might still do it <laughs> but that's the thing it came around that it done, it's back in style but it's back in style like it's even like it's too young for me to wear it's not our age group no more isn't it it's never too young for you to wear it, baby. We started this. Oh, okay. There you go, Neil. Not Neil. I'm going to look for him a track set. Like Mike Epps said, we started this shit, nigga. We've been wearing Jordans. That's before true. Before y'all niggas. That's true. Y'all niggas, we didn't even know what Jordans was because y'all niggas was glimmers in y'all daddy's eyes. Oh, my God. And we was out there wearing them, nigga. Oh, my God. So don't tell me I'm too old Bad to wear to Jordans. Bad to love is, um, but I think it's really interesting. Who's playing the hell out of it? Loretta Devine's in there mm-hmm. playing Yazi. Um, yeah, yeah, your mama. I have I know somebody named similar to that name. I'm trying not to say their name. Mm-hmm. Um, Yazir's uh, mother, who's everything. Mm-hmm. She actually reminds me of your mother, minus the jail. Your mom didn't go to jail. <laughs> I don't know. Did she? Yo, hey, <laughs> come on. <laughs> let me not speak for her, right? My mama had a gun. Let Let me not speak for her, right? And every new year, she used to go Lord. in the backyard and shoot it off. You know, I don't want her being. I'm being disrespectful. Your mama let the Lord. She team soldiers for Jesus Christ. But I think she reminds me of your mother of like the tough love that she has for her son. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, I might get in trouble for this. A lot of women sometimes single mamas with their sons. And I only know this because I've been on the other end. So I've dated men that come from single mom, some single mamas and some single mamas do a number on these black men. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, when they get to a certain age. Right. I ain't talking about when they're young teenagers or anything. I don't want a grown ass man. Right. So Yazir Yazir is 30 some three years old. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of mamas that would have petted this. So to put some context in um, Yazir is broke. Thirty three getting kicked out of a house. Like, you know, all this stuff is going on. And the mama's having real talk with him. Like, you know, what the fuck? What did you come out there to be with that woman? Did you come out to do your career? Whatever it is, you need to make it work and buckle down and do the shit. And I get up off my phone whining. Mm-hmm. Where I think that doesn't happen all the time. Right. They're like, well, come here and come, um, come tend to the breast. <laughs> I'm trying to do it without saying sometimes y'all niggas are soft. Well, I said niggas are soft. <laughs> and, and, not, not, and I'm not even talking about soft meaning like blackness i think sometimes those people associate soft with blackness but i'm talking about sometimes you got it's hard out in these streets mm-hmm. it's hard to make dreams come true yeah yeah you might have to eat some fucking raymonds yeah yeah you might you might get kicked out of a house mm-hmm. right you know what i'm saying you might be broke for a while yeah. but if this is your dream i need you to remain steadfast yeah. and focused you might go default on a credit card or two uh, okay like you know what i'm saying like she made it like i like how she made it that you know that doesn't define who you are right but if that's your dream go chase it right go go hunt it down so i appreciate that um i don't know anything else i'm just trying to keep it broad stroke so i won't give too much away for folks who haven't seen it i'm not trying to give too much away but it was excellent i think in the future we probably just need to do like a near and niambi spoil shit and just had that like its own little episode so we can really go deep into it yeah yeah because i know actually you know maybe next week we'll break it apart a little bit more i just want to give y'all um a little time to go through it yeah so you do you want to jump into some questions you want to do the questions yeah let's do some questions sure no worries. remind the folks why we're doing the questions and y'all we're doing a, a little shorter episode tonight because we're, we got to recording a little late and we're gathering everything together but don't worry mm-hmm. friday gonna be juicy yeah Mm-hmm. So this is the 36 questions that lead to love. So this was on New York Times. Um, and they say if you look into your partner's eyes for four minutes straight and then you answer these um, 36 questions, you'll find out if y'all really should be in love or not. Okay, Neil, that was a little dry. Oh, well, why don't you do it, Dave? I, I don't. All set. <laughs> Come on, Neil. All right. So, First question. So we're doing 14, 15, and 16. Yes. Uh, is there something that is there something that you dreamed of doing for a long time why you haven't done it yet? Ooh. Something I've dreamt of to do for a long time, but I haven't did it. Ooh, I don't know if it's anything I've dreamt of to do. Uh, dang, it's hard to stop Nyambi. Mm. No, actually, no, it is. I think I want to I want to start 
I've been wanting to put together like my own website for a lot of years, and I've never done it. Mm-hmm. And why you haven't done it? I think because oh, you making me be truthful. I'm insecure yeah. in my voice. I don't think anybody would want to li- read what I wrote. Really? Yeah. But you got all these hundreds of thousands of downloads of this podcast. You asked me my truth. I'm just saying. I just don't think anyone would be interested. Um, And I think it would be another layer of vulnerability. So I think it would be more about like digging in deeper to some of kind of my feelings, my preconceived notions, relationships I've had with people. Like, And I'm not sure people want to read it, nor am I ready to process it 100% myself. Mm. I think you'll be a dope blogger. I think you'll be a better blogger than me. It ain't truthfully. even about blogging. Like I'm just saying, but yeah. I, I think you'll be better off at that subject than I am, truthfully. Really? Why would you say that? Because you really go deep and thoughtful about it. Like mine's is just raw emotions and like whatever come out. I get a first draft and go. But you know, you really be thoughtful and researching. And, you know, researching and you be taking your uh your educational background and adding that to it. And I really don't do all that. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. So, you know, and I don't do all that. Motherfuckers be like, oh, Nirm, you're so inspirational. Well, I, I can only imagine yeah. you as a black woman doing it. Like, I always wanted to, like, document. And I, I, I journal, right? But not to the level that I want to. Like, I want to write, like, daily. I want to, write write my thoughts. And I'm not talking about think pieces. Like, I know I, I just want to process some of the stuff I'm going through and highlight it. Mm-hmm. And, like, take pictures of it and. I would love to. I want to do that, but I never had the courage to. I've never had the follow through. Yeah. And follow through is not something I lack on, really. Mm-hmm. You know, I would say I'm pretty much. I, I'm a good follow through. Like if I say I'm gonna do it, I usually gonna do it. But that's one of the things I have not followed through on. Yeah. I think I get even hung up on what's it gonna be called. And that's the thing I keep telling you. Don't like matter. I'm, I'm hung up on that type of stuff. It don't matter. Like what's it gonna be called? What's the headings? What like, all that. And, and the thing is, Naomi is sitting next to a, graphic, uh, a web a web designer. I've offered to do it multiple times. Your net's near. And I even bought some domains for her. Go near him. Can't say anything. Near him. Dead um, space, dead space. That don't mean nothing. You know, pregnant pauses are what, you know, signify something, a uh, very meaningful um, point. Oh, okay. So, Jesus, Jesus. dead space, pregnant pause, whatever you want to call it. Um. No. No. As a serial hobbyist, everything that I ever set my mind to do, I've done it. Wow. I wanted to be a speaker. I went to compete in the World Championship of Public Speaking and made it to the semifinals. Yeah. I wanted to run. I ran a marathon. I wanted to bike. I bought a bike. I wanted to podcast. I got two of them. Yeah. I wanted to write a blog. You did. I got a blog. Like everything I ever thought I was going to do or I wanted to do, I do. Only thing that's really is holding me up right now is this damn book that I'm trying to work on, this memoir. Yeah. And that's taking forever. But Damn. Maybe it's some other shit I don't didn't, didn't want to do. I have some cooking classes I want to take. Mm-hmm. I want to travel more abroad a little bit. I want to be good at a sport or mm-hmm. some form of exercise. Yeah. But now I'm telling the truth. Uh-huh. I wish I was better at makeup. Mm-hmm. Makeup, when I put on makeup, I think I've told you all this, I feel drunk. You feel drunk? Yeah. Why do you feel drunk? I feel like it's like this layer on my face and it just makes my skin like. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's heavy. Maybe I wear too heavy of a makeup. I ain't wearing the um, Mac, Mac, the casket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm not wearing that. I don't know. Good question. Next. Yeah. Um, what is the greatest accomplishment of your life? Jeez. That's a hard one for me. I think it used to be my education. Now it's not. <laughs> um, I think discovering my inner strength and resilience so really honing that skill in and knowing that i have that skill um and knowing how to use it um because i I just thought that was something that everyone had and everyone did but i'm learning that it's not Mm -hmm. Um, my big accomplishment is i think really fine-tuning my walk with the lord right okay it's something about that and I know y'all be tired of me talking about my walk and my talk and it's crooked and it's not crooked and all that stuff. But y'all don't understand. Um, it has been a crazy couple of years and just having the skill of almost instantly, right, being able to go anywhere I am and go into prayer and go into thought or go into, you know, trusting into his word and God grace it, through God's grace and mercy and know that no matter what happens, right, this is all in divine order. The sense of peace that's brought me 
is a huge accomplishment that I didn't have before, that I didn't even know I needed before. Mm. So that's not happening. Um, I think that was hard because I, I think all my accomplishments are great accomplishment. Oh, sure. yeah, I really think that yeah. is, to be near them. No, but I really think like whatever I am trying to accomplish at that point is like my greatest accomplishment at that period of time. Yeah. So I wouldn't say like there's no like um, end all be all or like there's no peak of like, oh, this is it. Like, this is the greatest accomplishment and everything is down here from now. Yeah. I really think that uh, whatever I'm focused on working on at that time and the things I accomplished at that time is, like, the greatest accomplishment at that period of time. Because mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I, as a black man, I forgot what they, it was something they mentioned, like, you know, if you really want to see a, what a black man is, look at all the trophies and shit that he have up on their mantle. Mm. And I'm the type of person that's, like, collecting trophies and shit like that. So, like, all right, look. I've done this, isn't it? You know, here's I'm a trophy tra- for speaking. I'm here's trying to a- get away from that, though. Yeah. I'm trying to get away with that. Like, I think to people when they be like, what's your biggest crime? And they be like, my kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, are we going to be like that when we grow up? I hope not. <laughs> Mm-mm. Don't say that. Right. So your your greatest accomplishment came <laughs> And they be bad as hell. I know. Then we look at your kids. They got snot coming from their nose. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> honey. You ain't been nowhere. I said, your greatest accomplishment came from sex? <laughs> a sperm and an egg? <laughs> Biology, nigga? That's my nigga? Funny, no. I'm no, just saying. It's more than that. We don't have kids. I'm, I'm I'm convicted that it has to be something that happens when that child comes into what? the world. Oxytocin? That makes everybody lose their fucking mind. It has to be. And I'm sure we're going to drink the Kool-Aid. Once I it hope happens. not. I'm sure. I hope not. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you value most? Oh, damn, I was still processing. Oh, oh my bad. Go ahead. I, I, did you know I'm just thinking when people like my greatest accomplishment is my kids. Hmm. Is my, marry me? What? Oh, okay. Never mind. I thought Nero was going to be being with me. That's not one of them? Being with you? Yeah, that's what's accomplishment. Oh, okay. It was accomplishment at that time. <laughs> 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 Nero, I'm just trying. No, I'm just thinking of like you know, when folks like the biggest accomplishment is like Mary. Like I'm trying to get in that space. I don't know if I'm in that space though. Mm-hmm. Buying a house, I've done that. Yeah, I've done that. We done. Hey, we did that under thirty. Yeah. So mm. sold a house before thirty, like before forty. Like I don't know. And that's why I really had to look intuitively to see what that accomplishment is. That patience. So, <laughs> and and that's the thing. Like yeah. when I think about it, like we when we say those things. Like, for me, it's like another day in the neighborhood or, like, another day in a park. Yeah. Like, oh, I just bought a house. Yeah. Oh, I just sold my house. Like, for me, like, those are just, like, normal occurrences that I expect those things to happen. But for other people, like, those things are, like, a great accomplishment. accomplishment. Yeah, and then I think it goes back to as I'm practicing this, the day of the Sabbath, right? Are we human beings or are we human doings, right? So yeah. are we the sum of all the things we've done? Or, you know, are we about the people we are yeah. the characters how we treat people right that type of stuff being kind and, yeah you know like i want to be like my biggest accomplishment is being kind in the face of, in the face of oppression because yeah. i ain't got there yet you're right so <laughs> so that's the thing like that's what i'm trying to get to and and that really that that really think that really has you thinking like these things are these material symbols, things symbols. these symbols of liberation. freedom and liberation like how much do they really matter yeah. Because like I said, like anything that I put my mind to, like I expect it's it to doable, happen. Right. Yeah. Like I expect it to happen and when it happens, like it's just an everyday in the neighborhood. But the hard stuff is yeah. the the invisible thing. So integrity, right. kindness, loving unconditional. Like that's the hard shit really. Right, right, right. right. Huh. I think that is the hardest shit. Mm-hmm. Being nice to folks. Being nice you hear me being yeah. nice to the oppressor. Showing being compassion. kind compassion yeah. to the oppressor. Like, you know, that type of stuff. I don't know if I've gotten to that level. I hope to one day get to that level, but I haven't. Yeah, but yeah. like those are accomplishments. Right, having a sense of um, self love and inner peace, regardless of what situation you're going through. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And still having love after lost losing everything. Yeah. I think about like the older people. I always think about the older people. I'm fascinated by older people who, and I mean older, older people, yeah, like in the nineties, eighties, nineties. Who, when they look around and everyone that they loved is gone, is gone. And not saying they don't have great grand. Usually at that point, that's when they have great grandkids and great grandkids. Because at that point, all their mothers, parents, brothers, sisters, close friends, and even some of their kids are gone. And so, how do you still get to the place of like gratitude and love when everything you've loved has been taken away from you? Yeah. 
right? Because yeah. you know sometimes you hear old people like, I'm done. I'm ready to see what's next, honey. Ain't nothing Check here out. left for me. Ain't nothing here for me. Oh, I ain't dead yet? yet. Damn. Did you tell that story about your mom who watched that older lady? No. Please tell this story. And then we'll get back to the question. Last one. So, um, <laughs> my mom watched my aunt's husband mother. So, what's that? Aunt's husband's mother. Her, her, her aunt, her no, aunt, her, her uncle. sister. No, her sister, my aunt. So her sister's yes. husband, mother. Okay. Mother-in-law. Okay, fine. Let's call it that. So yeah. she's like old, like super old, like a hundred. <laughs> he said super old. Like a hundred and like. Like disrespectful two. old. Like, like who can concuss you out and like not going to jail old. Still walking around, <laughs> raising hell. Yeah. Um, And one day like somebody pissed her off or something. <laughs> My mama, let's just call her her name, like Miss Edith or something like that. Yeah. So my mom went back in there and asked, like, you know, Miss Edith, like, what's going on? And then, like, Miss Edith was just in the bed. Because you said to some medicine or something? Yeah. Yeah. So Miss Edith was just in the bed, like, just not moving. And their mom's like, what the hell? So she, like, <laughs> shake Miss Edith, like, Miss Edith, Miss Edith, <laughs> you you okay? And then she opened one eye and looked at my mom and said, I'm dead. And then... <laughs> <laughs> closed her eyes and started holding her breath. Oh so my mom had to like hit her in the chest, yes. like Miss Edith, you need to stop. You need to start breathing. <laughs> and then she said, "My sorry ass son ain't do something, so I'm dying right now." Oh my, God. <laughs> my mom was like, "Not, not on, on my, my watch." watch. <laughs> <laughs> what level of old and honor you got to get to to be like, "I'm dying"? <laughs> like, Literally, I'm, I'm look, dead. I'm dead. Literally. The kids. We done said it. Like, that's what we joke about, right? She literally was dead. She said, I'm dead. She literally was, had her eyes closed, holding her breath. And then my mom was shaking the shit out of her. Like, Lord, no. Miss no. Edith, Miss Edith. <laughs> and she going to open one eye and look and say, I'm dead. And then close the eye and go, and go back to holding her breath. <laughs> I don't know what I would have did. Cause the thing is, you don't want to hurt, shake her too hard, cause she's fragile. Right. What is what? Could, if she, I depends how she on her breath. I guess you can squeeze her lips. I don't know. You don't want to hold her nose and help, right? <laughs> then you going down. Oh, manslaughter, attempted murder. <laughs> At that point, Mama said, "I'm not watching Miss Edith no more. She bad." <laughs> she said she bad like a kid. <laughs> she bad. She- <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, now we got one more question. Yeah, uh, number sixteen. What do you value most in friendship? Mm. Loyal, mm. loyalty. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> I think loyalty, right? Because uh-huh. I think loyalty encompasses all the other stuff: honesty, trust, all that type of stuff. That's that, right? Yeah. So, I think that's why it's important to me. So, loyalty and trust is kind of the same thing to me. Right. So if I can't choose loyalty, my other one would be consistency. Mm, what do you mean? Um, That's probably better than me. I think loyalty is a trait that Leo's always look for. Uh-huh. Right. So because I'm the type of friend that you could be crazy and I'm still going to stick by you, too. But I expect you to tell me the truth. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's a certain sense of loyalty. I, I believe in hanging in with folks. Mm-hmm. Right. Good, yeah. bad or ugly. Yeah. I believe in hanging there with people. Well, for the sake of conversation, you know, I'm there yeah. too, but I also value like somebody just being consistent, like mm. day in and day out. Like I know what I'm expecting from this individual. That's true. I don't need Leo ass friends. I mean, not Leo oh. ass friends. Gemini ass friends. <laughs> yeah, Gemini. Gemini. Gemini's are very good friends, but they're very. You don't know. You don't necessarily know what you're gonna get. Right. And the thing is, Gemini's don't have a lot, but they have about two or three mm. personalities. They they rotate through. Right. And you have to be very aware of those. I need consistent ass friendships. <laughs> like Nia. That's why well y'all are opposite signs. You know, we wake up and y'all border like y'all are like pole, I forgot what it's called when they're like opposite sides yeah. of each other. So oh. you're like attracted to each other. Like what he lacks kinda you have, what you have he lacks and it balances. It's like a um feng shui type mm-hmm. stuff. Yin yang type Yin-yang. thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But you said what you gonna say about Nia? But no, like uh, consistency. Mm-hmm. We gon' t- you know we gonna talk we gonna talk at this time when a brother getting his feelings I know what you know what time it is mm-hmm. when I get my feelings he know what time it is oh Jesus listen to this and so on and forth yeah 
<laughs> loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. I don't have to have consistency. Mm-hmm. I believe people go through things and need space, especially me. Sometimes I need space. I'm still process. I'm just getting to the point where I can call people consistently. Yeah. So I had to have people to appreciate me needing space away. But I'm but going back to loyalty. I'm type of friend. If you call and I don't pick up and you text me like 911 or I need you, I'm stopping what the fuck I'm doing to do what I need to do. Or I also say I'm that type of friend. If you call me or text me something going on with your family or you personally and you need me, I'm stopping what the fuck I'm doing. I'm getting to a plane and I'm coming to you. Like, I'm that type of friend. Mm-hmm. But I might need a few weeks of space. <laughs> Just get that to me. A few months. I bet, hey, them few months. That you couple together with years of support, child. You want to take it? Yeah, I'll take it. Or a friend that'll just send a check? Well, no questions. See, I'm also the no questions asked for. I'm like, what's going on? You need this for this? And of course, if I got it, right? If I got it to give, I ain't the one to ask questions. Now, I meet a strong friend, but nobody checks up on a strong friend. No, I got people who check on me. I just got these friends recently, though. Prior to, I didn't. Mm-hmm. Like last few years, I've honed in on those relationships. What do you mean? Why do you mean this? You strong? are. You are a strong friend. Mm-hmm. You the strong, dependable friend that people call when they in jail. <laughs> I give. I don't got folks out. Yes, I will get you out of jail. I will fly to your the mama, daddy, auntie, sister funeral, and I'll make um, some macaroni and cheese, or a lasagna, or a lasagna, or a pork shoulder. It's important. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You don't think? Yeah. Like, hey, I'll be the first. Oh my God, something going on down. Should I make them a lasagna there? Because, <laughs> you know, I, maybe I'm just projecting. Whenever I'm going through something, I stop cooking, I stop eating, I get dehydrated. And sometimes I just need folks to bring me nutrition. <laughs> so that's my love language. Mm-hmm. So if I've ever made food for you or brought you something, that means I really love you. Gonna close this out. We made it near him. Near him held on by a thread, y'all. Yeah, I'm sleepy as hell. I know he is, but we had to get this out for y'all because we love y'all. All right, to submit your black love story, go to blacklovematters.com slash love story. To submit a question for Kitchen Table Talk, shoot us an email at blacklovematters at gmail.com. To leave us a comment about anything that we talked about, head on over to the website. Uh, we got that SoundCloud, and we also got that voicemail at 508-784-1111. 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is, is ever, ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.